Shalom, call Akim. Well, first off, by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakal Kadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. All right, Shon Yaqabat, Laha, Zakwanyam, Shal Yasha Allah. That's double honor to the elders of Israel, which are the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, known as GMS. Shalom, Abrakim, Laha, Saka, Dawada. Peace and blessings to the Tabernacle of David. All right. When the Lord is raising up in these last days. Shalom. All right. This video is just based upon the thought I was thinking, you know, and uh, I was thinking it's it's a uh, it's a painful journey to the top. All right. Because the uh, <clears throat> ultimate example is Yahweh Shai. He's the greatest spirit that the Heavenly Father Yahweh has created. All right. But in order for Yahweh Shai to receive his glory, he had to. Uh, he had to uh, go through tribulation, trials and tribulation. And the same thing for the men under him, the 144,000, the elect. They're going to have to go through the same thing. All right. But since I started with Yahweh Shah, I'm going to start with this. It's Philippians chapter 2. All right. And we'll start at verse 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shah and Mashiach. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to start with this right here. This is Matthew. Chapter 16, verse, I'm going to read uh, 24. All right, it says, Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right, so if you're going to come after the Lord, you have to deny yourself and bear your cross to follow him. Okay? And what's the importance, the significance of following Yahweh Shai? Because if you follow Yahweh Shai, like it says, this is Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me. All right. See, those who have followed Yahweh Shai, his disciples, right? And the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. He also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. All right. If you follow Yahweh Shai right now. All right. You're going to be a top uh, ruler, top judge in the kingdom of heaven, the eternal kingdom to come underneath Yahweh Shai. All right. But what did Yahweh Shai say? We read in Matthew 16, 25. We got to read it again. OK, it's Matthew 16 and 24. Then see, I was trying to say unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. All right. You have to deny your, your carnal desires, your lusts. All right. You got to pick up your cross, pick up the burdens. The scriptures say, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. All right. And follow me. That's the only way you're going to be able to follow our Lord and Savior. How about Shin Yahweh Shai? Okay. So back into Philippians. It's Philippians chapter 2. Verse 5 again, let this mind be in you, which was also in Yahweh Shai, who being in the form of the Most High, thought it not robbery to be equal with the Most High, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Yahweh Shai took, made no reputation of himself, all right? Although he had spiritual power, all right? Although men sought to make him a king, let's get that real quick. This is uh, St. John. I believe it's, uh, what chapter is that? Sixth chapter? Yep. St. John chapter six, verse. All right, so this is after Yahusha performed a miracle. A miracle, all right? This is St. John six fifteen. It says, when Yahusha therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. All right, so Yahushua performed a miracle where he gave them food, fish, and bread, right? They they sought to make him a king, but Yahushua made himself of no reputation, so he fleed from them into the mountains by himself, all right? He had spiritual power, all right? He could have been great in this world, okay? But he denied himself, and he bared his cross, all right? He stayed the course and, and became a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, all right? Therefore, we're able to receive this knowledge in these times, all right? The whole nation is going to be established because of his sacrifice, okay? 
So I'm going to read verse 7 again, Philippians 2 and 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. All right, he took upon him the form of a servant. That's why it says, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 20. All right. Verse uh, 28. All right, this is Matthew, chapter 20, verse 28. Salaki, I gotta do something real quick. Slot. I gotta turn off the notifications. So you guys can't see my private life. Alright. But this is Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. It says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. All right, so Yahweh Shai, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. Another word for minister is to serve. All right, so back in Philippians, this is Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself. All right, that's what it means when it says you have to deny yourself and bear your cross. That means you got to humble yourself and become, and he, right, right, and it says, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. All right. So that was real grievous. That was tough. That wasn't joyous. Okay. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 12. All right. And we're going we're gonna to start at verse 5. All right. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor fate when thou rebuked of him. All right. You're not supposed to despise the chastening of the Lord. All right. Because... That was the chastening of the Lord unto Yahweh Shai, all right? Because Yahweh Shai, it, although he, he was perfect in, in this flesh, he wasn't perfect before, all right? We know Yahweh Shai, if he could receive it, he was Adam. He, he sent as Adam, all right? He was also uh, King Solomon. He sent as King Solomon. So Yahweh Shai had to been, he was chastened as Yahweh Shai to pay for his sins in his past life and also to pay for the sins of the, the whole nation of Israel. All right. This is Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. All right. Yahweh Shai, he only had to uh, make a sacrifice one time. All right. That's why it's, that's why when you read Hebrews, the seventh chapter, it's talking about how this covenant, this new priesthood is greater than the old one. Okay, but um, Yahweh Shai he had to give up sacrifice. He had a, he was a sacrifice first for his own sins and then uh, for the rest of the nation. Okay, and he only had to do this one time. All right, but um, back in the Hebrews twelve. All right, this is Hebrews chapter twelve, verse five again. Ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, all right? You're not supposed to faint when you're rebuked of the Lord, okay? And you neither are you supposed to despise the chastening, all right? Because this is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, all right, verse 31. It says, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, all right? So if we uh, made sure that we did the right things at all times, we wouldn't receive judgment, all right? Because if you're doing good at all times, you're doing, you're falling away perfectly. There's going to be no need for judgment. All right. But 32, it says, but when we are judged, all right, because we're, because it says, the scriptures say, always fall short of the glory of the heavenly father. So we're going to go off. So we're going to need to be corrected. Okay. We're going to need chastisement. All right. It says, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. That's a form of the Lord's chastisement. All right. That we should not be condemned with the world. All right. The Lord puts us through these uh, grievous times. All right. That so that we are not condemned with the world because the condemnation of the world is thermonuclear missiles and fire from the from the uh, from the angels. OK, that second death all right, what's going to consume the whole world. That's the, the, the condemnation of the world. All right. But because we endure the chastisement of the Lord, we're not going to be partakers of that second death. All right. We're going to receive victory like Yahweh Shai has already obtained. All right. And this is the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. All right. Verse 7. 
If ye endure chastening, the Most High deal with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? All right. The Lord deal with you as sons. And the, and the reward of being the son of the Heavenly Father is immortality. The inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. All right. So it's a good thing for the Lord to chasten you so that you could be a son of the Heavenly Father. You know? We're Israel. Yahshua Allah. He is the prince of the power. All right. Verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chastisement, or of all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. All right? The heathen, they're bastards. The Lord doesn't uh, warn them when they go off. All right? Because he does ultimately judge them for wickedness. Example, the Egyptians. All right? The Lord judged them. All right? The, the, the Canaanites. The Lord judged them. And the biblical Edomites, the Lord is about to judge. And all the nations are going to receive judgment for transgressing the Heavenly Father's laws. All right. But he doesn't warn them. He doesn't. He never dealt with them. Like it says in Psalms 147, it gave them the law. All right. So it says, but if ye be without chastisement or of all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Right. So when we. Fathers of our flesh, they disciplined us when we went off as children, and we referenced them for it, right? Because it delivered us out of the path of, uh, you know, harming ourselves. All right, it says, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? All right, if we uh, endure the chastisement, we're going to be delivered from death. We're going to be delivered from the second death. 